Hello, everyone. Uh, as you said, my name is Houston Putman. I'm a software engineer at Bloomberg and uh, the creator and maintainer of the Apache Solar Analytics uh, component, which is a contrib module. I'm here to talk to you today about relevant data analysis and, unsurprisingly, how uh, the solar analytics component can solve your needs. So first, I'll just give a brief overview of what we do at Bloomberg. Uh, we are a provider of financial, governmental, law, and news data for a variety of professionals. Our strength is accurately and quickly providing this very relevant information to these clients. And um, since we have professionals in finance, any instability can really cost our clients money. So stability is key. Um, we employ over 5,000 software engineers, and many of these are tasked with uh, providing this very relevant data. And since we have so much data, this data uh, isn't necessarily useful to the client's raw, so relevant uh, analyzed data. Um, and that kind of ties into what we're talking in here. That is not what I wanted to do. <laughs> there we go. So today we're going to start off talking about relevance and analytics and kind of how to merge these two worlds, uh, then talk about how solar analytics is one approach to this problem, uh, and then how the solar analytics works in a distributed mode because it's not as trivial as some would think. Uh, after that, we'll talk about performance considerations, which uh, unsurprisingly ties into the distributed nature of the component and then additional features that have been introduced over the last year. Uh, and at the end, we'll briefly talk about kind of how this is used within Bloomberg and what use cases this is really uh, apt at solving. So relevance and analytics. Uh, as I said, Bloomberg and many other people really have this use of finding relevant data and then analyzing it. And there are a lot of established search engines, such as Elastic and Solar, and a lot of established analytics engines, such as uh, Spark and Hadoop. But they don't really play together that well. Um, there are solutions to take data out of Solar after a query and then ingest that into Spark or Hadoop to perform data analysis. But really, the benefits of these external analytics engines come when you are processing a vast amount of data, so like hundreds of millions of records, billions of records. And taking all of that data out of search engines is pretty slow. Um, yet, Spark and Hadoop have a, very, like a vast uh, kind of universe of tools around them because uh, data scientists have built them over the years because they needed them with these systems. Uh, so they do solve a lot of problems. Solar Analytics is trying to take a chunk of these problems and uh, make a better solution. Uh, so instead of having this external search, in, uh, this search engine talk to this analytics engine and kind of having to manage both of them, have an analytics engine reside within a, the search engine, uh, which kind of fixes a couple of problems. One, taking all the data out of Solar doesn't really need to do that because if you have your analytics within Solar, uh, the analytics engine can read directly from the index, which is obviously much faster. Um, and since uh, no one really likes managing too many dependencies, just relying on a search engine is much easier than managing a search engine and an uh, analytics engine and how they talk to each other. Uh, kind of the last point is that solar is as live as the data ingested into it, and therefore a lot of clients need analytics to be on this live data. And if you're using an external uh, analytics engine, it's pretty, I don't know, it's pretty common to cache results from Solar or cache the results of these analytics, which causes your results to not be as live as they could be if you were getting your analytics straight from Solar. So let's bring it back a little bit and say, kind of ask the question, why do we need analytics? And how did this uh, guide the creation of the Solar Analytics component? So uh, kind of a warning, I am a very big baseball fan. I'm sure most of you all don't know anything about baseball, but all the examples will be in baseball, and you don't need to know anything other, uh, other than the fact that uh, baseball data is very easily broken down into individual events, so documents in the search engine. Um, and we'll be uh, talking about the Astros, who won their first World Series in 2017, so a lot of the examples are from that. So let's say that we have a search engine that's full of baseball data, 
And this is very convenient because we can search for uh, results for a certain team, a certain year, a player, et cetera. Um, but however, like when we get these results back, it doesn't really tell us much because as most statisticians know, one piece of data doesn't give you insight into like the whole corpus of data. So even the worst hitters will hit a home run and even the best hitters will strike out. Um, in order to find meaning within this data, we need to analyze it. This means combining it, aggregating it. And we do this through analytical expressions. Um, you can see these throughout your life. Like, you use them every day, probably. Um, but they've been doing this in baseball for over 150 years. So we have statistics called on-base percentage and batting average, which are probably the two most popular ways of expressing how good a player is batting. Um, and these are very old concepts that map very easily into analytical expressions to very new concepts. So analytical expressions are a very good way of mapping real-world problems into problems that can be solved with the analytics component. So let's just get an example out there. Uh, since we're using solar, we need to first query for some results. Let's ask for some Astros results, which gives us a list of uh, players and their uh, plate appearances back. Uh, first, we're trying to calculate on-base percentage, as you can see on the right. And we're going to build up an expression to calculate this. So first, we need to map data within each document together. And Solar Analytics, as I said before, uses a map-reduced framework, much like Spark and Hadoop. Um, so the first step of any analytical expression is taking the fields from your solar index and mapping them together to combine data. So for our addition function, we're trying to add all the times that a player got on base per plate appearance. Uh, once the mapping has been done, we need to then reduce the data because that's where the uh, analytical magic happens. Uh, we reduce data across all the documents to uh, find the aggregation. So we take the count of plate appearances, sum up all the times that they've been on base, and then we finally do our last mapping uh, to map the results of these reductions together to get an overall result of on-base percentage, which is 0.600. So as you can see, this mapping reducing framework is kind of built on the same principles as Hadoop and Spark and allows for as much parallelization as possible for these things. So mapping can be done, say, per shard, because it's done on a per document basis. The reduction can be done using groupings, such as Spark and Hadoop, and uh, kind of aggregated together at the end. So this map reduce framework really makes the component as extensible as possible to further parallelization. So I showed you building up the on-base percentage uh, analytical expression. Um, now I'll show you average as well. So all these analytical expressions start with constants and fields, which are from your index. Um, uh, from these fields and uh, constants, you can map them together on a per-document basis and then reduce those values together. And after the reduction has been done across all documents, uh, map the uh, results of those to get your overall values. So as you can see, we can calculate analytics over entire result sets. But how often do people do that? Very rarely, because the thing you want to do with these uh, values is compare them. Um, I don't really care the batting average of everyone in 2018. I care about the batting average uh, of each player in 2018. So we need to break up the data, calculate results uh, based on those groupings, and then return them. So in Solar, we already have this idea of facets using the facet component. And so we can extend that into the analytics component to break up the data. Um, in baseball, you can uh, think of groupings such as group by to see which players are the best and worst, which years in a player's uh, career were they good, which years were they bad, which teams are good, which teams are bad. Um, basically, as many ways as you can break up the data, the analytics component lets you do that. So we'll go through the different types of facets available. Uh, first, we have value facets, which are an extension of solar field facets which let you group the data by the value of a field or a mapping expression. We'll go further into the value facets later. Um, but here on the right, you can see that players have been grouped. Uh, the data has been grouped by players so that we can calculate analytics on a per-player basis. 
Uh, next, we have range facets, which work exactly the same as they do in the facet component, um, which you can break it down by dates, such as May and June, or values such as uh, innings one through three or innings four through six. As you can see there, we have data from inning seven, and that's not included because it wasn't in the defined set of ranges provided to the, uh, in the request. Solar also allows for query facets, so the analytics component also provides query facets, so you can ask for cold games, hot games, if you have an additional query to send to Solar to break up the data by. So I mentioned value facets earlier and how they're kind of an extension of field facets, but uh, using some of that analytics magic in there. Um, value facets uh, let you give a mapping expression. And when we were breaking down these expressions earlier, that's any expression that doesn't have a reduction function in it, because you can't really break down data by the reduced value. It doesn't make any sense. Um, so for an example, if we didn't have uh, what stadium uh, plate appearance occurred in, we could say that, uh, make an expression that says if that player's at home, uh, at their home stadium, return that team, or not else return the opposing team. And this kind of gives you that data without having to store it. Value facets also allow for more complex sorting than uh, given in the uh, facet component in solar. So you can sort by multi multiple criteria, uh, be it expression or facet value and then set a limit and offset, of course. So this is just an example of how to express it in the analytics uh, framework. Uh, and this is what I explained earlier, so I'm not going to go too far into it. Pivot facets are what kind of the same idea as they are in the facet component, allowing drill down of uh, different uh, faceting drill down over multiple mapping expressions. Um, so it's like the solar uh, the solar facet component pivot facets, but instead of fields, mapping expressions, much like value facets. Uh, complex sorting is enabled for each pivot individu individually, unlike the facet component, and then results are calculated at each pivot level. Um, let's go over an example. So say that we wanted to calculate how each team did a uh, against each other team in the baseball league. So we can see the Astro get the results from the Astros, calculate their analytics, then see how they did against the Yankees, against the Angels, see how the Yankees did against the Astros, the Red Sox, and the Blue Jays. And since uh, the Dodgers haven't played anyone yet, they won't have any uh, children pivot to make. This is just how you would express it in the analytics language. So how does this mapping and reducing framework work with facets? Um, here we queried for the same set of Astros results, and we're calculating on base percentage again. We first map uh, the documents with the values within each document, and this is unchanged from before since we haven't started to reduce. But once we reduce, instead of having one reduction at the end, we need to reduce for each uh, value of the uh, facet that we're calculating. Um, so we're going to, in this example, break up the data for each player. Um, once the reduction has been done, we can then map the result from each of these facet values to get an on-base percentage for each of the players. Pretty straightforward. So I've given you a lot of baseball examples, and I understand most of you all don't know baseball. Here's an example of how we use this at Bloomberg. This is the screen merger, mergers and acquisitions, which basically tells you about companies buying other companies. And here, all the data is provided by the solar analytics component. And you can see here we have analytics expressions, just the count of deals, the minimum, maximum deal size, median, and then volume, deal count, et cetera. And then facets that this data is broken up by, such as payment type being cash, stock, equity, and whatever target multiples is. I'm not really sure. Um, so as you can see, this real world applications of this analytics component. So distributed analytics, why is it needed? Um, so in solar, collections can have billions of documents. However, shards are limited to do 2 billion documents. And since a lot of users need to be able to uh, analyze lots of data, that 2 billion documents per shard really limits uh, users. Um, so in order to solve this, we need to have data uh, spread across multiple shards. And 
this causes some problems when trying to compute analytics. Um, what is that issue? So obviously, let's go back to our map reduce framework. Mapping is really easy since you can just map on a per document basis and documents are on one shard each. Uh, so uh, mapping isn't affected by this uh, sharding. However, when you start to reduce the data down, you'll get one set of reductions per shard because you, the data, you can't really, when you're doing this reduction, you can't talk across machines um, very easily. So what do we do with these three sets of reduction at the end to get one overall set of reductions? Um, for some things, this is a very easy task. So associative reduction functions such as sum, count, min, and max, this is trivial because you can take the sum of each shard and then take the sum of all those results and you get the overall sum. Um, but for non-associative reduction functions, this is pretty hard because you require all the data to be in one place, such as percentile and median and unique. Uh, percentile and median require a sorted list of all the data, and unique requires a unique set of all the data, unless you want to, uh, if you want accurate information. So uh, the solution is since every reduction function needs a different set of data sent across shards, the reduction functions are in charge of exporting and merging that data in the original node. Um, so for min, uh, the min function sends all the minimums from each shard and finds the minimum of all those values at the end. Unique sends a unique set from each shard, creating an overall unique set. Median sends sorted lists, creates an overall sorted list, and some you, you understand. Um, so as you can see, each function here is in charge of sending and merging its own data, making it very easy to create new functions in this uh, framework. So let's just briefly go over how a distributed request is sent inside of a solar cloud. The request is sent to an analytics component, which uh, finds one, shard, one replica of each shard to send the request to. Uh, the request is sent there. All the mapping is done on each of those shards, and the initial set of reductions is calculated. The, that reduction data is sent back to the originating shard, which is then merged, and then the facets are sorted and limited, and then the response is sent out. So the takeaways is, from this is that distributed analytics does let you speed up aggregations a lot, because that mapping phase can be paralyzed across the shards and done at the same time. Um, and for associative reductions, which are really easy to distribute across shards, uh, you can really speed up your aggregation by as many shards as you have in your cluster. <laughs> Uh, meaning that if you have, say, 12 shards, uh, it will perform roughly 12 times as fast as just having all of your data in one shard. And since we need, we need the request interface to be the same across single sharded and multi sharded uh, collections so that no features are lost in between and the users don't really care where their data is. So let's talk about some performance considerations. Um, but first, let's talk about how a request is processed in the analytics component and basically how we can speed things up. So first, obviously, the query that's sent to the analytics component is executed, and a result set to calculate the, the analytics over is found. Um, for each of those documents, uh, it's looped. Uh, the analytics component loops over each of those documents, uh, reading it from the document from the index, and uh, filling the reduction data for expressions and pivot and value facets. Um, since query and range facets are done by sending extra queries to Solar, those have to be done in a different step, which is a new step. And so the queries are sent, uh, the queries are executed, which kind of returns to step one and uh, populates additional reduction data for those facet values. Uh, once all the reduction data is uh, found, it's sent back to the originating node. Uh, the uh, overall, the results are calculated the facet results are filtered, and the results are sent back to the user. So what things can we do to make this faster? So a lot of the times in these requests, you'll, sit, you'll send some of the same sub-expressions multiple times. So in these set of four expressions, you can see multiple things that are referenced uh, more than once, such as count PA is uh, referenced twice, add home run and BB uh, walks is referenced twice, and home run is referenced three times. Uh, instead of calculating all these individually, we can uh, 
basically share overlapping expressions so that we only have to read uh, plate appearances once from the index. We only have to read home runs once. We only have to add home runs and walks once. Um, this really speed things up. This speeds things up for large analogs requests. Um, let's go back to the distributed reduction solution and see how we can speed things up there. Since, uh, as you can see, if you're trying to calculate the median over a billion values, that can be pretty slow because you have to send billions of values across the network to the originating node. Um, so what we can do is not reduce that amount of data because to get accurate results, you have to send all the data back, but we can make sure that we're not sending the same data multiple times. For example, if we're trying to calculate the median of inning, the 20th percentile of inning, and the 60th percentile of inning, uh, all of those uh, reduction functions require a sorted list of innings. So instead of sending that sorted list three times, once for each function, we can have these functions share the data. Uh, and we do this through reduction data. Um, so instead of having reduction functions merge and export data, we have reduction functions reserve reduction data, which manage collection, exporting, and merging. So here we can uh, see that median and percentile would uh, reserve a sorted list of their expression, and unique, set w a unique would reserve a unique set. Um, and this can really give performance improvements for non charged collections. So let's go to the, let's give an example of this and say that we want to find the median of inning, 20th percentile of inning, 60th percentile of inning, sum of home run, and mean of home run. What reduction data would these reduction functions require? Um, and as you can see, they only require three sets of reduction data. That's count of home runs, sum of home run, and sort of list of inning. Um, once this has been found out, we can just ask each shard to collect these three bits of data and then merge and export, uh, export and then merge that in the originating node. And once that's happened, we, each reduction function can take the data from the reduction data it's reserved and calculate uh, its value instantly. So as you can see here, all five of these functions only require three sets of reduction data, which vastly improves the performance of sending data across the nodes, especially with the slow network. Cool. Some other performance, uh, various performance considerations to think of are adding new expressions don't necessarily increase the amount of time the query takes to calculate. Um, I would very much suggest that people add the things that they want to be calculated and see if it per uh, affects performance, because the way that the analytics uh, component uh, kind of solves the overlapping expressions and the sharing of production data can really mitigate a lot of fears of uh, calculating uh, the performance overhead of calculating expressions. Um, it should also be noted that the non-associative reductions, such as median and unique and percentile, require a significant amount of memory for large results at sizes. So obviously, if you're trying to compute the median of a billion values, storing those billion values in memory t is a hefty, hefty charge. Um, and then all fields used in these expressions must have doc values enabled. That's just kind of a caveat, because that's how it reads from the index. And if you use the old analytics component, the new one has a much lower memory consumption for high cardinality facets, so facets with hundreds of thousands of values. So some additional features I'll just breeze through. These have been added in the last year or so. Um, expressions over multi-valued fields uh, are now supported by the component. Uh, so for example, uh, expressions, functions that used to take in a single value and return a single value, such as log and negate, now take in a uh, uh, field with multiple values and return multiple values uh, for each value in that input. Um, you can see how the mapping works. It's pretty straightforward. Um, functions that take in a single va two single value parameters and return a single value are a little harder to map to this multi-valued expression world, uh, but it works pretty simply. So you can take a single value in the first parameter and a multi-value in the second parameter, and it returns a multi multiple values, uh, one for each mapping, uh, mapping the first parameter which each, with each value of the second parameter. Um, and this works the other way around, taking a multiple multi-valued parameter in the first slot and then a single value parameter in the second. 
Uh, these functions also can take in a variable length parameter, such as concatenate, add, and multiply. Um, and it's very easy to see work in a multi-valued uh, expression world by just taking in one multi-valued parameter and returning that single value. So instead of taking in like add of one and two, just say add a value that contains one and two, and it returns that same exact value. We have new supported mapping functions, such as logical ones, comparison, and conditional. Uh, and you can, you've seen these in the ex uh, examples I've given previously. So variable functions are a new feature enabled too. And so they allow you to kind of put business logic into your request and not have to t uh, write out the same thing over and over again, since we know copy and pasting can lead to lots of errors. Um, so using variable functions, you give a variable na a function name with the variables it takes in, and then it uses uh, and then an expression that uses those parameters. So if mean wasn't uh, enabled in the Alex component, you could say mean of A is the division of sum of A and count of A. Um, and then use mean as if it was a built-in function in Solar. It also accepts variable length parameters since uh, analytics functions also take in variable length parameters. So if you put in CSV of one and two, it would expand out to concatsep of comma with one and two, which results in one comma two. We, so in the first example I gave, it wrapped A with sum of A and count of A. Um, not all, if you were given a variable length parameter, wrapping it could not work because if you wanted to like fill missing each value with NA, just say filling, fill missing A with NA doesn't work because that would, fill missing just takes two parameters. So we have a framework of kind of lambda functions that say for each value of A, fill missing that value with NA. And so if you put CSV of one and null, it would map out to concatsep of fill missing one in A and then fill missing in null in A. Um, yeah. If you have any additional questions about this, I know it's a little confusing. Uh, there's much more in the solar reference guide about it, and you could ask me after the talk. So, on to use cases. When does the solar analytics component work for you? Um, as, you can, as you've probably seen here, solar analytics only provides first order analytics, and first order analytics are analytics that are based off of the underlying data set. Um, second order analytics are analytics that rely on that underlying data set and first order analytics. Um, third order, et cetera. So if you, uh, right now the analytics component only supports first order analytics. Um, there are plans to support in order analytics in the future. Uh, but for now, if your use case, uh, most use cases really only need first order analytics. So uh, this shouldn't be a problem, but it's something to keep in mind. So how do we use this in Bloomberg? Um, I just start this off by saying that Solar Analytics doesn't fit all use cases. That's not what I'm trying to say. Bloomberg still uses Hadoop and Spark heavily, and there are several teams that use other analy internal analytics engines, such as streaming expressions and JSON facets. Um, Solar Analytics is used heavily within our team zone. As a member of the search infrastructure team with hundreds of clients within the company, uh, we know what teams are using what features, and the analytics component is used heavily within Bloomberg. Uh, and it has replaced many high-priced external solutions and custom in-house code that we can now deprecate. Um, the use cases range a lot, like from analyzing hundreds of values to hundreds of millions of results, uh, using one shard versus dozens of shards, and then not using any facets to using facets with hundreds of thousands of values. So this has been tested very heavily using a variety of different use cases. Um, there's a lot of future work that we want to enable, such as, as I mentioned earlier, supporting in-order expressions natively. We also want to add integration with streaming expressions, um, since both calculate analytics, it would be nice if they could talk to each other. Um, also, the ability to pivot over different types of facets. So say you want a value facet pivoted by a query facet, uh, much like it works in JSON facets. And then finally, the ability to add custom functions in the schema so that you can write your own functionality and not have to actually modify solar source code and build your own package. In conclusion, um, the analytics component provides complex data introspection without spending the resources on managing external, um, 
analytics engines. It's running in production at scale at Bloomberg, and it's available starting uh, this, all the features that I've talked about are available starting with the Solar 7 release. It's been in Solar since Solar 5, but the distributed and new features uh, are in Solar 7. Uh, documentation and important bug fixes were included in Solar 7.2. Um, and basically, if you have a solar cloud and need analytics, check out solar analytics because it could possibly fit your needs very easily. If you have any questions, there's a section on the reference guide about it. Um, we are hiring at Bloomberg for search professionals, so please come talk to us if you have any questions about that. Uh, we have some current work of moving the analytics component from the as a contrib module to moving it to core. And we have a history of the different uh, solar tickets if you're interested in that. Cool. Any questions? Hello. Uh, you talked about the uh, concat function for multivalued yes. fields. But uh, do you have, for example, a count function? Yes, yeah, so most of the, so I, those are just like examples. Um, in the reference guide, it gives all the default functions and what type of parameters they allow, multi-valued or single-valued. Um, um, I think all of the reduction functions allow single or multi-valued fields. Like, it doesn't really care. So if you're doing a count, you can do a count of documents, which is like, if you have a multi-valued field, it would just count the number of documents that have a value or count the number of values in each field, if that makes sense. So uh, you counted uh, the number of values in a multi-valued field, and uh, after that, can you sort all your results on this base? So you have to, sum of are you mean sorting like facets? Uh, because you can sort facets on that count. This, you yeah, need so you, you would like to see the results in your facets with, with the number of IC Seven values and six, five. Yeah, you seven. can sort by any analytical expression that you give it. And counting is, yeah, one of those. Yeah. Thanks. Hi, great talk, thanks. Um, my question is about, I've, I've come across a couple of use cases where people want dynamic facets, so they don't know the buckets at the start and they want to derive it from the data as they go through. Have you thought of any of those use cases? So in the original analytics component, it did support that, but it was a bit tricky to do given the, like whenever we added distributed support, um, because you need to calculate all the results, then go back out to the shards to get more data. Um, so that's not supported right now, but when we add uh, in order and uh, the in order expressions, that should be it. I would imagine that would be enabled using the results of previous expressions to facet over the new ones. Yeah. Questions? Okay. If none, thanks, Houston, for the talk.